of the work going on in this first year junior class is the result of a visit the children made to a farm. Before they went, their teacher discussed with them what they might find there, and they are now investigating a number of things which interested them. The classroom is always well stocked with a good selection of tools and materials with which the children can work. These children wonder if different kinds of milk weigh different amounts and if they take different times to boil. I've mixed two and a half ounces of powdered milk with one and a quarter pint of water. I have boiled half a pint of it and I've found that it takes five minutes which is less than the ordinary Channel Island milk, which takes seven minutes, five seconds. I think the Channel Island should take longer because it has more cream in than the powdered milk. The more water it is, the quicker it boils. The pupils are encouraged to devise their own ways of recording their findings. They are aware of the special qualities of a wide range of materials as media of communication and have a great facility for choosing an appropriate method of saying what they want to say. This girl is obviously used to handling a felt pen and planning a large chart. This is a binder twine for tying up bales of hay. The group wondered why this particular twine was used. But, as so often happens with children of this age, the inquiry has become a much more general exploration of the properties of strings and twines. They have measured its strength, and here we see them finding out about its burning. They have chosen to record their findings as a graph, but they are still at a stage where they prefer to fix the materials themselves directly onto the paper. Later, they will learn to represent the material by a line or some other mark. We tried bale of twine, cord and raffia. The cord burnt most, down to six inches. If children are to learn effectively, not only must they take things to pieces and analyse them, but they must also put things together constructively, as these girls are doing with the sausage ingredients. There is a synthetic, as well as an analytical approach to learning. We made some sausages out of pork and beef. First we minced the pork and then the beef. We tested the skins by pulling them to see which one was the strongest. The polythene was the strongest, and the butcher's skin was the weakest. This boy is measuring how much a turnip shrinks as it dries. His teacher has encouraged him to represent the circumference as a block graph, but he still needs to reassure himself by sticking the string to the paper as well. I put a piece of string around the big turnip, cut it off, and then I stuck the piece of string on my graph. A popular belief is that good eggs sink, while bad ones float. But it needs to be investigated. Well, we put all the eggs in this bowl and uh, see which one um, could float. And one of them floated. On the fourth day, there was a crack in it, and, um, and I thought from the air might have escaped from it. This group was also surprised that a heavy hen could sit on eggs without breaking them. So they planned this experiment to find out how strong an eggshell is. It was five pounds, five and, and a half ounces. Mm -hmm. It took on top of it, but uh, I think plasticine was supporting a lot of it. Cause I, don't th I don't think an egg could stand that. And plasticine would really be, be supporting a lot of it, because first you'd have to squash the plasticine. I think the weight gets all the pasta seed first. Mm. Well, I think if you just put a pound weight straight on top of that, it will probably smash it. Do you agree? Yeah. Oh, no, it's I wonder if the strike from the shell is it um, comes according to the size of the head. Because if the head was so heavy and it sat on an egg that was a, a weak egg, then it might smash. Yeah, the egg, the because um, the head must be much, must be lighter than the egg. 
No, that, it can't, it won't necessarily be lighter than the egg, because I don't think it can be lighter than the egg, but light enough not to smash it. You could um, see if the uh, white eggs shells were um, stronger than the brown egg shells. I suppose you could determine that with the same piece of machinery, though, because even though mm. it, but because the plasticine would be helping the same amount as it would be with the other one. Now we are with the oldest juniors. Their teacher has gathered together the questions they asked during a discussion about air. Because they are older, and because of the practical experience they had earlier in the school, these children are able to define much more precise problems, and their inquiries are much nearer to being truly scientific. This group of boys is investigating the effectiveness of different shapes of aerofoil. We made a lot of paper aeroplanes, and we tested them in the wind tunnel. We then found out with the stopwatch how long it took for them to go from one end of the wind tunnel to the other. If the streamline was poor, um, it would move backwards, but if it was quite good, it would stay on the line. Another group were interested in candles burning in air. They are trying to discover which is the most effective form of candle wick. Their interpretation of effectiveness is the length of time the wick burns. We wanted to find out the best way to make candles. So we uh, got a candle and lit it and then we got a jar and put some candle wax in and melted it. And we made some moulds and, and poured the melted candle wax into the mould and put a wicking of each different kind into each candle we made. Just like the younger children we saw earlier, these girls are expected to choose the materials and a method of display which seems most appropriate to them. We used wool, cotton cord, string, felt, paper, parcel ribbon, candle wick and cotton. We let them burn for two minutes, then we blew them all out. Then we put them on a piece of paper and measured them. String and cotton burnt very slowly, but wool and candle wick burnt very quickly. These two girls have a more difficult problem because they are working with living material. Notice how they are able to change their experimental technique and improve it. This comes only with greater maturity and practical experience. We got two tadpoles and put them in a small round bow. We got a stopwatch to see how long it would take them to swim around the bow. But they wouldn't swim, so we got a thin tube and tried to put a water mice in, but it was too thin. So we got a long, thick tube and put plasticine on the end. But the plasticine wouldn't um, hold, so we had to find some corks and put some corks at one end and we put some water in and the cork at the other end and we saw how the tadpole swam and we measured and timed it. When we built the space station, we had to devise a way so that people could get around it. So we invented a monotube. These boys were building a space station, so the work on air fitted in nicely with the problem of transferring astronauts from one part of the station to another. Notice what imagination they bring to their experimenting and how important discussion is to the development of their ideas. We put cars inside the monotube and balloons supply the compressed air that moves them along. 
For emergency brake, you could have a balloon at the other end. So when two balloons meet, it will stop it. it it'll stop oh, dead in the middle. But Michael, uh, the thing which we had, we could drop card in front of it so that the so that the air wouldn't blow it along. The air, it would just stop. Yes, I know. But with yes. the hole, with the hole through the top of the of the uh, of the of the um, pipe, uh, when the wind comes along, it's going to f it's going to find a hole to get out where the card comes in. Oh, oh, yes, I know, a sliding, sliding door. door. A sliding oh, yes, door. Or an automatically sliding door that... Yes, so uh, when some no, just stop it. On. Just go down and, like, have a an, an, air, t an air tank there. Yes. Or an airlock. Do it. Mm. Yes, but I mean, we can't really make an airlock just like that. Mm. Well, well, well... well the children in this last group are eight years old. Their teacher is using their experience of previous years to help them grow towards the sophisticated and rigorous experimenting that was evident in some of the ten-year-old children. I thought of doing heights, but I thought they'd all be the same, where I found out that they weren't. From one foot it takes 31 seconds, from two feet... It is from this kind of work, throughout the primary school years, that the questioning and inquiring attitude of tomorrow's adults will come. From five feet it takes 15 and seconds, and from six feet it takes 14 seconds. I reckon this works by, by vacuum. Once you start sucking the water up, and it's pulling a vacuum, which nature won't allow, so the rest of the water follows up, until you get the air coming up the pipe. 